I'm Lizzie Shortall and this is a video about creative writing. Lorna from Bump and Beyond Wellness is doing uh, 40 days of flow on her Instagram and she asked me to contribute around um, what is my flow which is creative writing. So flow really is anything that engages us to the point where we just forget about everything else. So it's one of those things where you notice a half an hour or two hours have gone by um, all of a sudden and you've been lost in your own world, you even forget yourself. Um, and it's a really nice thing to do as part of self-care, which Lorna is promoting. So you might already know what your flow is or you might like to try creative writing or it might be something you did before that you want to go back to. So I'm just going to talk a little bit in this video um, about an exercise that I do around poetry um, and don't let that put you off because poetry can be scary but this little exercise makes it very easy and it's just something nice for you to give a go if you want to try something different. Um, my background is that I did a creative writing course about 10 years ago now and um, I realised I absolutely loved writing and I've been writing since on and off and um, I recently just finished my first novel and that's going to be published at the end of May, The Lotus and the Tiger and I run creative writing courses as well. Um, I'll give details about that at the end if anybody is interested in contacting me. So I'm going to be looking at the screen here a little bit as well. Um, so just to introduce, okay, so creative writing, I'll give you a definition. Basically, it's considered to be any writing, fiction, poetry or non-fiction that goes outside the bounds of normal, professional, journalistic, academic and technical forms of literature. So basically, anything that you're not doing as an assignment or um, as part of a job is considered creative writing. So it's when the um, the writer creates events, scenes, characters, maybe even their own world and um, they just create something. So we're going to attempt to do this via this exercise. OK, so you're going to write a poem about yourself. And what I'll do is I'll briefly outline the prompts that would help you do it. And um, if you want to jot them down and you can obviously stop and start the video as well. And then when I've given the brief outline, I'll go back in more detail over them. So for this example, all right, we're picking a time and a place or something that represents yourself. So one that I've used before is a visit to ancient Egypt. OK, so sometimes poetry works well when you make comparisons or striking comparisons. And um, most people watching this are going to be in Ireland um, and ancient Egypt and Ireland are about as different as you can get. So we're going to try and link ideas and objects, cultural beliefs and practices from ancient Egypt to our particular location and our time. OK, so if it was me, um, I'm living here in Kilkenny. So m my case, it would be um, I'm in Kilkenny and for you, it's wherever you are. OK, so the prompts are and bear with me because it does make sense when we get there. Um, first prompt is, how would you like to be buried? If you want to write that down. The second one is, what would you have inscribed on your cask? Third one is, what images will be drawn on your cask? Or whatever you, way you're being buried. And the fourth, name precious or magical objects you want wrapped around you. And the fifth, so there's five prompts. Um, if a CT scan was to be carried out on your body, what do you think it might reveal? Okay, so you can stop the video and write them down again if you want, so that afterwards when you're giving this a go, um, you can use them. And you can spend as short or as long on this as you like. And obviously your poem can be as short or as long as you like. So we'll go back to the first one, okay? How would you like to be buried? So if you're going to compare it to ancient Egypt, you might be saying, I want to be buried like an Egyptian. This could be your opening line for your poem. Um, what words would you have inscribed on your cask? What do they say about you? What do they reveal about the world you live in? 
So what would people say about your hometown or your home or you or your business or something that you're into? Um, and what images will be drawn on your cask? So what do they reveal about you and your life in the 21st century? And then name precious or magical objects you want wrapped around you and describe one of them and why you want it there. And then for the CT scan, if it was to be carried out on your body, what do you think it might reveal? Would it reveal years of drinking, smoking, too much sugar? Um, so I want you to think of your poem as what's called an extended metaphor, which is basically an extended symbol. OK, so your casket is your poetic vehicle uh, by which you will convey your life. OK, your culture, your times, your values and beliefs. Um, and then you'll reveal all this by talking about your casket or whatever symbol you're using. So hopefully that's making sense. Um, I'll give you an example of somebody who did this um, with me on one of my more recent courses. And he used um, an old suitcase as um, the, the symbol for his life. Um, and when I did it myself, it was a blossom tree that I used. Um, there's a beautiful blossom tree in my garden here that was planted before we ever moved in. And um, it just surprised me the first year I was living here. It just opened up with all these beautiful pink blossoms um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And extra special because it only blossoms once a year um, and I used that in my poem for you know the the blooming up of things and then the falling away of things and um, I was able to liken the rings on the tree to the years in my life and um, you know I brought my children in by you know talking about them playing under the tree and then my connection with nature with the bird feeder that we have hanging out of it so you can really stretch loads out of um, a symbol if that's what you want. So I'm going to read um, some of Derek Mann's poem here, OK? It's called A Disused Shed in County Wexford. To give you an example of um, where somebody has used an extended metaphor or a symbol um, to describe their life. And for him, he's talking about a disused shed in County Wexford. And it's a really long poem. Um, so I'm going to read the first couple of paragraphs and you might like to look it up yourself. Um, obviously, he's a very established uh, poet and don't be expecting anything like this from yourself. And if you can, brilliant. Um, but this is just to give you an idea. So a disused shed in County Wexford by Derek Mann. Even now, there are places where a thought might grow. Peruvian mines worked out and abandoned to a slow clock of condensation, an echo trapped forever and a flutter of wild flowers in the lift shaft, Indian compounds where the wind dances and a door bangs with diminished confidence, lime crevices behind rippling rain barrels, dog corners for bone burials and in a disused shed in County Wexford. Deep in the grounds of a burnt out hotel, among the bathtubs and the wash basins, a thousand mushrooms crowd to a keyhole. This is the one star in their ferment, or frames a star within a star. What should they do there but desire? So many days beyond the rhododendrons, with the world waltzing in its bowl of cloud. They've learned patience and silence, listening to the rooks querulous in the high wood. I'm going to read one more because my favourite part of the poem actually is in the, the next verse. Um, they have been waiting for us in a photo of vegetables, sweats and civil war days since the gravel crunching interminable departure of the expropriated mycologist. He never came back, and light since then is a keyhole rusting gently after rain. Spiders have spun, flies dusted to mildew, and once a day perhaps they have heard something. A trickle of masonry, a shout from the blue, or a lorry changing gear at the end of the lane. 
Um, I absolutely love the line, um, he never came back and light since then is a keyhole rusting gently after rain. It's just such a cool image. Um, so you might like to, to have a look at that poem yourself. Um, so I'm going to suggest that you give it a go and I'd absolutely love to see what people come up with and um, please do um, contact me via my email lizzie at the mindfulplayground.com or the mindfulplayground.com is my website um, and I'd love to hear how you get on and um, as I said my book The Lotus and the Tiger is being published at the end of May and if any of you read it, I'd absolutely love to hear some reviews and some feedback. Um, OK, so I hope you find some time to um, have self-care and to find what your flow is or to get back to your flow. And if you have any questions around creative writing or you want to come on to my course, um, it's a five week course for 50 euros. It's one hour a week on a Thursday morning, uh, half 10 to half 11. And that's starting, the next one's starting on the 11th of March and we will be on Zoom. It's just very lighthearted, easygoing and um, there's absolutely no homework, which is very important, especially at the moment. Okay, thanks for listening. Take care. Bye bye.